Hello Bob, it's our pleasure having you over here in the Ithaca Museum for the exhibition on the samurai. We can see lots of um, tsubahi which were in your collection for quite some time. And how did you get into tsuba in general? Well, when I was a teenager, I was very interested in European arms and armor and the movies of the time and uh, I could neither find nor afford European armor, but there was a great deal of Japanese material that uh, was available in various shops and stores, as well as the large amount that had been brought back to America by the soldiers after the war. So those pieces I could buy, and that was a substitute for the European material. But um, that was how my interest changed and how I began more with Japan than the original European idea. So where did you start to study and um, go to college and um, how did you start collecting tsuba? Well, I bought my first pieces just from local antique stores and Pasadena, California, where I lived at that time, and had, um, I was 16 years old in 1946, and I um, found that uh, there were many, many pieces, which cost one dollar each in those days, which a teenager could afford, and uh, then uh, I gradually found the books on the subject from uh, dealers, the uh, book dealers, and the library became as important, if not more important, than the objects. And that was how I learned what the pieces I had to find, what they were and what they were about. And why did you concentrate on signatures in such an extent? Well, it's, I guess in my nature, I like research, I like figuring out what I am uh, looking at and what I am studying. So at that time, the only source for signatures came from here in Germany. A man called Shinkichihara was at the Hamburg Museum and wrote the two books on signatures. And his second book was produced in 1931, and that was our only source of signatures. And so any artist or work that I found that was not in that book, then I kept record of it. And it gradually grew into thousands of names, all of which I um, recorded on little cards and built this card index. So that was, uh, I didn't have any Japanese sources at that time, although there were one or two books in Japanese on signatures. But um, I laboriously translated those and just kept going from then on. How did you come to Japan to study with your teacher? Well, there was a gentleman in San Mateo, California, John Yumoto, and uh, I had heard of him as an authority uh, on swords and fittings, and so he came to Los Angeles to see my meager collection. And over the years, we became good friends, so in the late 1950s, about 1958-59, he asked me if I wanted to study in Japan with the leading authority of the day, Dr. Kazutaro Torigoe, who lived in Okayama, Japan, and I said, sure. So he made the arrangements for me to go there, and um, I uh, spent a year studying with Dr. Torigoe, having classes in the mornings and afternoons, and then uh, on the weekends, I would see uh, collections of Suba of various students and friends of his. That was in 1960. 
So you made quite some trips to Europe as well, didn't you? Well, I did. I uh, actually came over to uh, London to study at the Slade School of Fine Arts in 1954, and I was already collecting at that time, so I went to my first auctions at Sotheby's, which was where uh, most of it, although there was another company called Glenn Dennings, which was also selling. And then I was uh, lucky enough to uh, meet uh, B.W. Robinson of the Victoria and Albert Museum, and he let me see the collection there, and the same at the British Museum. So I was able to uh, see these large collections, and um, that only uh, kept me going, and also, uh, naturally, I was able to buy Suba in London at the time. So, one day you met my father. How did that happen? Well, not sure, but uh, we immediately clicked and uh, had uh, good rapport, and also we were able to uh, talk on a subject that we both understood and enjoyed, and then somehow the idea of publishing the signature book came up. So I, uh, when I returned home, why I began to get the material together and um, would um, write out what was necessary, and uh, we did it all by fax machine in those days. And each day for years, we would fax back and forth, and uh, gradually the book came together and uh, was beautifully published here in Germany. And uh, it uh, has had two addenda since then, so now there's about 13,700 names. Okay, so who are the most important people that you've met in your life? Oh dear. <laughs> um, well, my teacher actually was the primary person as far as influencing my knowledge and studies, but uh, there were um, others in Japan, both collectors and uh, uh, other authorities. And I was lucky enough to be introduced to most of them by Dr. Tony Loy at various times. But uh, as far as uh, study outside of Japan, most of that I had to do by myself on my own. And didn't have any. John Yamoto was a, a great help, but unfortunately he passed away and uh, there hasn't been anybody since then. Um, are there any regrets in your age of 88? No, <laughs> but I've had a marvelous life and everything has uh, gone pretty much the way I wanted and I don't think I have anything that I would do over again. Isn't it that your era is dying out right now? That is the unfortunate part of where we are today. I have no students who I think would carry on the study that uh, I've been doing and also the fact that um, the young people uh, who are uh, of this era don't seem to have the interest in these areas of art and uh, it's uh, sad but uh, perhaps um, I still have 10 or 15 years so maybe I'll still find a student if I'm lucky. So didn't you have your own auction house quite a while ago? When I lived in San Francisco, a friend of mine, Jack Greenberg, asked me one day if we wanted to begin an auction business of swords and fittings, and I said, well, let's give it a try. So um, we produced our first catalog of both swords and fittings, which was very successful which took about a year to uh, have uh, come to fruition. And then unfortunately Jack uh, passed away and so I continued on with just fitting sales on the next uh, nine catalogs, 
which went over about a four-year period. And uh, then I decided that uh, I had had enough of that and um, didn't want to continue on, although I was um, at the same time sometimes being a consultant for Christie's and Sotheby's auction houses. So we did the Compton sale in uh, New York at Christie's. Dr. Compton's collection was one of the finest outside of Japan. And then a number of uh, same type of catalogs, but not of the quality of material was uh, produced over the various years. And uh, I've uh, enjoyed being a consultant, uh, but uh, that also is becoming uh, something that is disappearing because the great collections have, for the most part, been sold. Which are the most important public collections worldwide? In the United States, the Boston Museum, Metropolitan Museum, there's a quite good collection in Chicago at the Field Museum. That's the major collections in uh, the United States. Here in Europe, the Hamburg is the best. The um, Halberstadt in Copenhagen. And uh, then there's many small museum collections, some of which are quite good. The Guimet in Paris is uh, not comprehensive, but it's good. And um, in London, why uh, you naturally have the Victoria and Albert Museum, British Museum, but uh, that's about it as far as museum collections outside uh, of the United States. What is your experience in the price development of Tsuba? Well, as of now, it fluctuates. Up until 1970, the uh, market was uh, probably in value half of what it is today, and then by 1970, there was a huge influx of uh, collectors and interest, and valuations of, became as high outside of Japan as they had ever been. And then it dropped back again to a uh, lower valuation through the 80s. But ever since about 1990, why it's been rising steadily almost every year since, and uh, the market is surprisingly strong, and the problem is that there isn't as much material available as there was um, certainly 10 or 20 years ago. So you think there's still a chance on the market now? Oh yes. No, the, uh, the problem is finding enough material to make a good sale. The big collections, uh, certainly all the English collections have been sold. But material seems to appear uh, from un unknown sources, and uh, I'm sure that there'll be collections that turn up that will make uh, very good uh, sales in the future. So thank you very much, Bob. It was great talking to you. Well, thank you very much for having me.